Hi, my name is Ellen with Ellen Estelle, and today I'm going to be showing you how to sew McCall's M8043, the Alistair top. This top calls for charmeuse, crepe, crepe back satin or chalice. You will need nine 3 8 inch buttons. And in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to sew view A. The fabric that I've used is a satin from my stash. It's a really nice blush floral print. The pattern has full sleeves with cuffs and button details. The sleeves have gathering at the top and at the bottom. It has a band along the waist, a deep V in the front, and a standing halter neckline. The back is completely open. The only closure it has are the buttons at the neckline. You can tie the band in the back. Or you can tie the band in the front. Keep watching to learn more. First, start out by cutting out your pattern pieces. Satin can be slippery, so you may benefit from basting spray or tissue paper to help stabilize your fabric. Pattern piece number 5 needs to be cut on the bias, meaning at a 45 degree angle from the selvage edge. After cutting this piece, fold it in half and stitch at one quarter inch along the longest edge. After sewing this piece, use a small safety pin or loop turner to help turn this piece right side out. Then cut it into nine pieces, three inches long. Extra fabric has been added. Iron on your inner facing to your front and back bodice pieces. Finish this raw edge with either a serger or by turning under the edge and top stitching. Once the raw edge is finished, press the inner face piece inside with the wrong sides together and baste this panel at the top and the bottom edges. Repeat this process for both sides of the front and back bodice. Now would be a good time to add your label before folding under the inner facing on the back bodice piece. Now taking your front bodice pieces, line up the center front and tack down the left and the right sides together. They should only barely overlap. This will be your deep V. Then with right sides together, attach your back bodice pieces to your front along the shoulder seams and side seams. Stitch it 5 eighths of an inch and finish the raw edges. Take your interface collar piece and attach three loops that you cut from pattern piece number five. Match them up at the circle, fold in half, and stitch into place. Then take your second collar piece and place it with right sides together. Pin along the top and the sides, leaving the bottom open. You will stitch them together at 5 eighths of an inch, starting and stopping at the large circles. Clip the corners and turn the collar right side out. Press out the corners nice and square. Now that your collar is pressed out, fold under the open bottom edges towards the inside at 5 eighths of an inch. Then match up your inner faced collar piece with the right side of your bodice fabric. Pin your collar to your bodice by matching up your notches and fitting your left and right sides inside the open bottom edge of your collar. Leave the collar piece free that is not interfaced. Stitch this at 5 eighths of an inch. Now take the non-interfaced collar piece and stitch it into place, covering the seam that you just sewed. This is why you need to have pressed it under at 5 eighths of an inch. Now take one of your interfaced cuff pieces and add three button loops just as you did with the collar. Match them up with the circles marked on the pattern. Take one of the uninterfaced pieces and match it up with right sides together. Pin into place and stitch around the bottom and the sides at 5 eighths of an inch, leaving the top free. Now clip the corners and turn right side out. Press out your corners nice and flat. To help make the cuffs look more clean and pressed, top stitch around the bottom and the sides at 3 eighths of an inch. Attach your three buttons at the circles marked on the pattern. 
Press under the top edge towards the inside at 5 8 of an inch. Now, for your sleeves, sew a basting stitch between the notches marked at the top of your sleeve. Fold your sleeve in half with the right sides together and stitch the side seam at 5 8 of an inch stopping at the large circle. Finish your raw edges and fold under the edges from the circle to the hemline. Stitch the folded edges down at 2 8 of an inch and press. Repeat for the other sleeve. Then sew a basting stitch all around the hemlines of the sleeves. Now take one of your cuffs and match up the inner faced edge with the hem of the sleeve, matching your notch. Pull your basting stitch tighter to help fit your sleeve into the cuff. Pin into place and stitch at 5 8 of an inch. Leave the uninterfaced piece free. Once attached, take the uninterfaced cuff piece and either hand stitch it into place covering the seam you just sewed, or you can use the stitch in the ditch method, in which you will sew along the right side of the sleeve at the seam where it meets the cuff and catch the uninterfaced piece on the other side. Once done, you can attach your buttons to your cuffs. Now attach your sleeves to your bodice. To do so, match your notches and with right sides together, pin your sleeve into your armhole. Remember that the sleeves will have gathers at the top. Try to make it as even as possible. Finish the raw edges. Now take your interfaced lower front or waistband piece and pin one of the ties to the side seam, matching your notches and pinning with right sides together. Repeat for the other side. Stitch together at 5 8 of an inch and finish the raw edges. Repeat for the second piece. Now match up these two pieces you sewed together with right sides together. Pin all the way around the edges, stopping at the circles marked on the ties. Stitch together at 5 8 of an inch and finish the raw edges. Make sure to keep it open between the circles at the top edge. Clip your corners and flip right side out. Press your edges square and flat. Your top should be looking like this. We're almost done. Sew a basting stitch along the bottom edge of your front bodice pieces between the small circles. Then match up your interfaced waistband to your bodice with the right sides together. Pin the bodice into the waistband matching your seams and notches and fitting between the circles. Leave the uninterfaced piece free and stitch at 5 8 of an inch. The last thing to do is enclose the seam you just sewed with the uninterfaced waistband. You can either hand stitch it, stitch in the ditch, or sew it with right sides together. I chose the last option and sewed it with right sides together as far as I could on both sides and then hand stitch the rest closed. Now you're done. McCall's M8043, the Alistair top, is super cute and stylish. You'll be on trend with this new pattern. Be sure to like and subscribe. Until next time.